Ritchie from Waffle TV, sponsored by West Beer, and today we're joined by award-winning spoken word poet, Vanessa Casuli. How are you today? Yeah, I'm good. A little tired, but I'm good. Too yourself? Tired. I'm good, thanks. Good. And we're talking about your new, like, poetry play, One Last Thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so tell us about it. Um, okay, so um, I like to describe it in an analogy, actually. Um, it's the feeling you get when you've had an argument with someone and you're both yelling and screaming at each other but you're not actually saying what you actually mean to say in your fury and then the person storms out the room and you think oh I want to rewind time so that I could say this and this and this because I didn't actually manage to get it out at the time because I, I, my words were just getting away with me and um, the basic idea is that we all have these things that we feel like there aren't even words to express all these kind of intangible, awkward, tangled feelings and um, the play hopes to kind of take those out of the shell that they're in and just get them out there and find the words to say the things that we all want to say. Um, yeah, so there's all these fairly simple, relatable characters and they've got various situations that they're put under and I tried to make it as universal as possible. I'm trying to show all these different aspects that we all have in ourselves and it's supposed to be a reflection of what we usually feel too awkward or too embarrassed to say so yeah one last thing is kind of the oh one last thing before I leave this 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 that's the basic principle behind it so this is your debut at the Fringe it's a totally new show why yeah. have you chosen the Edinburgh Fringe too um, well it's yeah. it's it's the hub isn't it it's where everyone goes um, yeah. And it really is everyone. I mean, <laughs> you, you show up and you think, oh, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm a drop in the ocean here. And I think that's 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 a, a crazy thing to get your head around because obviously within your own little sphere, you might be, you know, quite established or, you know, quite well known and then you get plonked here and it's like, oh, you're doing a show. Well, so is everyone. <laughs> um, yeah, and it's, it's, it's wonderful and exciting and... Yeah, you can get just kind of carried away with the tide of it, but it's also really scary. It's really scary and tough and hard to make yourself noticed, but it's definitely been a steep learning curve. What do you think of poetry, like, in um, today's cultural sense? Do you think it's kind of lost, or do you think it's still as popular as ever? Um, I think it's definitely having a, a, a renaissance of sorts. Um, you know, people like Kate Tempest and Scroobius Pip and um, lots of other names. Um, are kind of giving it a new life and you know it's really coming into its own amongst like um you know arty cultured people but also I think there's less of a sense of it being something that's only for academics or only for middle class people that yeah. went to private school um yeah so it's definitely becoming the universal and widespread thing that it ought to be um it's still, it's still, it's still a bit nichey. Still a bit nichey, mm -hmm. um, but that's hopefully what keeps it fresh and keeps it exciting. Because often, when things become homogenised through popularity, that's often when quality can start to decline. So I suppose it's about a balance, really. Um, but yeah, I don't think it's lost at all. I think it's, I think it lost, it it, it lost its way a little bit, but it, it hasn't been lost completely. So yeah. that's good. So it's yeah. back again. Yeah, 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 you know, things come in ebbs and flows, so. These cobbled streets stretch out like unfolding arms, and who can resist the dirty golden glow of this city's charms? And there are no baby-oiled hunks in kilts built like forklift trucks, but there are moustached men in tartan anoraks who whisper and sing whiskey-scented love songs that could rot your teeth and steal your heart. And where to start? perhaps on the mile, to wade through piles of flyers with no wings to speak of. Crazy, clash-coloured, costume folk with mouths that run faster than any motor. Or perhaps you'd be better off tucked in the soft, rolling hills that spill their secrets into willing ears, if you care to listen. You can even see these secrets in the raindrops that glisten on these cobbled streets that stretch out like unfolding arms to greet you. And Edinburgh has met many ramshackle souls before this, but she senses something particularly special about yours. And with a wobbly grin, she welcomes you in. And she is very, very pleased to meet you. That was amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much for that. Um, yeah, uh, yeah <laughs> that I wrote, I wrote that, that yesterday beautiful. in like 20 minutes after falling asleep in the foyer of my venue. That's amazing. 
I'm so taken away, away by that. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Edinburgh's, Edinburgh's lovely. It's, it's, it must be so much more peaceful when there isn't however many people there are now. But it is really just the most breathtaking city. So. Thank you so much for talking with us today. It's been such a pleasure. And you can catch cat one last thing at the Sweetgrass Market. Yeah, Sweetgrass Market, which is just off the mile, about five minutes away, um, 1 pm. Um, it's about an hour and 15 minutes. And yeah, please do come along. This has been Waffle TV.